Now, I do see a question. Now, why, now, or great, now, why can't I do it on my actual character, the one that has 1,200 days played? Mm. Yes. Because that just won't work for a couple of reasons. Gear, they would need to arbitrarily limit your gear. Whereas, what this is, this is a new character that is put into basically a kind of a different world instance entirely. So you can't go and get gear that outshines the stuff because you, you are dropped in. And you've got like really weird gear to start with. If the guy started playing uh, D, uh, DK and it was, what do you call it? It was, it was like health per second and stamina on the legs I spawned with and then versatility on like the chest. No strength, no main stat hmm. on the gear. Then there was, what do you call it? There was, uh, main stat on the weapon but no stamina then there's you get strength that gets added to your cloak when you get like a you kill a mob and if a thread of uh, whatever it's called drops you then get extra strength so the reason you actually can't play it on a character that you already own is because it's like par wise it's a completely separate like thing you don't want to have any like cross bleed there whatsoever yeah it would it basically it would be game breaking uh, yep. The design intent is quite inspired by an ARPG season where you make a seasonal character, but that character can then basically mature into your main account, which I know for a lot of people, they want to do this on their own character. Um, there's probably a way that they could, like, if they did that, they would basically be cloning your character onto the event server, and then what do you do at the end of it but when you have to deal with the two clones? The Sorry, not yeah. the event server. The event is taking place in regular realms. Yeah, that's the interesting part. It is kind of like on the same realm. as of, Like, it's not the same as Plunderstorm, where it's a different tab and a different realm entirely. It is literally just, this is it. This yeah. is it. it is, like, you're right, it is basically just an ARPG season. And I, like I assume that way. those characters, of course, are stuck in Pandaria. Um, as far as anyone can tell so far, yeah, okay. yes. There's it no would be way pretty insane if they could just go to other places. Yeah, because then you would go and get gear from other places or anything like that. But it's also like, it's clearly like a completely different area with different mobs and different questing because, like, here's a, uh, an example. Now, actually, maybe because of worm mode and maybe because of other things, like, they've been able to figure that out. But you do say the... The Miss Madara quests. You're on the Skyfire there, and you're picking up the intro quest, but uh, Eternus is there, stealthed, so you can talk to her and get her commentary on what's going on, or what like things are happening. You get that, but also you, you, you do the quest as normal, but the quest has a different reward. Which I think that means that's a different quest. You mean like technically in, speaking? Yeah, technically yes, speaking in terms yes. of how like, it's uh, uh, you know, internalized in the game. Like, engine, it is a different quest because it has a cache of infinite treasures. So this isn't Pandaria. This isn't like you will, you know, take the portal to Jade Forest and fly over and see Time Runner characters. This is a completely different, completely different, like, kind of instance of the world with different enemies, different everything, which is kind of interesting. Like, it, it's it's weird. So, um, yeah, they did, yeah, they got data mined as separate quest lines. Yeah, because, like, that's, that's kind go. of it. They are re. <laughs> it's it's a remix is the best way to put it. It's all the stuff, but it is actually technically new, quite literally. And I, the fun thing with this is, uh, maybe we'll talk about this a little bit later. We'll actually get right back into the news. But the first thing I noticed was, you could just grind out strength, as a DK. I don't think we're gonna get hmm. as an experience anything like because obviously it's not like classic because it's Dragonflight game. Like you're got the classes talents something like that there. Yeah. But you also, like, it's not going to be the same as going and doing the raids now. Like, you know the way people do um, Alkalon with limited item level and level? It's not going to be like that. It's going to be completely different. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, Brawl It's a mini SOD inside Retail WoW. That's the best way to explain it. It's a mini SOD, not quite to the same extent, and only in Pandaria. Yeah. I think it is, honestly, I think it's a brilliant idea. This is a really smart way to reuse that content. Um, we will, I, I said earlier in, uh, you know, take one of the stream that we'd sort of pin the FOMO talk for a little bit later because, th like, there is some FOMO, but also this is this is a design that would only, uh, that wouldn't really work in an evergreen fashion. 
it. So there's one of those things where if you have to support absolutely everything forever, then you do run into a problem where there's then less things you can do because everything you do then needs to be built uh, in a completely evergreen manner. But uh, if you do something like this, where it's a seasonal event, then you basically just get to fuck around and experiment. That's where a lot of, uh, say, in Path of Exile, you know, whenever people talk about a season in PoE or Diablo, they generally don't talk about FOMO. They'll criticize a battle pass. That's a different thing. Um, But they don't talk about FOMO because they understand, essentially, how the design works. Now, personally, I generally, in the ARPG genre... The whole seasonal character thing just doesn't do much for me. I don't care about that as much. I think here, though, because, well, here, your character that you get at the end of the season, after you've leveled it up and everything, it has genuine value. Whereas in Diablo 4, a character that, you know, a seasonal character, you take it through the season and it goes back into the Eternal Realm. But who the fuck does anything in the Eternal Realm? Because it's pointless. The thing that matters is the seasonal realm, because that's the whole model of a game like Diablo. Whereas here, we have our sort of seasonal, you know, characters for this uh, event. But when they go into our main account forever, they're proper full characters in a version of the game that is the main one. So that, I think, is, uh, is, is different. And it actually means that the progress that you make here is less transient and it's more valuable because it does go somewhere where it's useful, as opposed to being just thrown into the bin of Eternal Realm characters in in Diablo, say. Yeah, there's... It's kind of weird, because, like, a lot of... There's so many different players who play this game at the minute, and the problem is, like, you will... You'll do something... You'll see so many people say, but I don't want another alt, or but I only play my main. So I think the actual, like... The amount of people who are going to be talking about this publicly... And, you know, saying, well, actually, I, I wouldn't mind another alt. I think they're going to be a substantial vocal problem. Probably like a silent majority, realistically. Because, like, people who play the game a shit ton are going to volley alts. People who play the game a little bit less, but quite a bit. You know, they're going to be, they're going to be uh, having fun with this to a degree. Now, there is uh, mostly the case of, you know, needing to make sure people are like get the person the, the the permanent progress and that's why they did like the same thing with plunderstorm where they go there's transmog there's items there's shit you want all the time which is a little bit like people have the complaint that they you know feel coerced into doing things for permanent rewards mm. and i'm just like i find it really hard to empathize with that because it's like just don't do it I know that's a controversial thing to say, apparently, at this point in time. Oh, it is. It is. Like, I find it actually, I find it difficult to empathize with that because... Well, remember, of, even internally. Yeah. Uh, there's severe disagreement in our team. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it's partially delineated by era of gaming. I'm not, like, I'm not really sure mm-hmm. where, what, sort of what the delineating thing is. Uh, but yeah, t- to you and me, it's hard to understand because the rewards are like a... Well, they're that. They're... they're a, a cherry on top it's like you know you you don't there's a lot of times you don't do something for the medals you do something to get better at it and for the experience which is like very much how we're both driven um which is quite different to the collector uh sort of gameplay so if for you well actually do you know what there's a lot of people who play world of warcraft like they would play neopets actually mm-hmm. um maybe that is a useful touch point for the collector archetype of players where there will be aspects of the... There's a thing called Grundo's Cafe, which is basically, it's like old school RuneScape, but for Neopets, right? Um, Actually, let's just do the FOMO talk now, because we pretty much went into it, Um, where they've made a lot of changes compared to original uh, Neopets that are generally trying to be more player-friendly. But I guess when I think about the people who are very angry over the Plunderstorm rewards being from Plunderstorm, and therefore only accessible by engaging with something that involves PvP. To someone like you and me, that's just like, well, if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. You don't need the reward. Like, why do you care about the reward if it's the... Re- you know, it's like, why do you care about a, um, you know, a medal in a running race if you don't want to do a running race? Surely if you don't care about a running race, the medal for doing a running race doesn't mean anything to you. But that's fundamentally not how the collector plays uh, video games. And I guess we've talked about virtual work a lot that uh games like world of warcraft 
to people, they're actually, because I think humans naturally are beasts of burden, right? Whenever we don't have responsibilities or goals that we want to do, we just kind of fall by the wayside. So for a lot of people, that collector type of gameplay, I think that ends up being quite mentally comforting. It's like there's a long-term goal. There is a clear way to achieve that goal. Um, and that, I suppose, is why then FOMO maybe strikes so hard because then it feels like a violation of that sense of control. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and I guess a perversion of the way that they play the game because they're interested in collecting. For many other people, those rewards just exist as a form of reinforcement and, you know, like a little badge. You know, this is, you know, it's like you're, well, what is ahead of the curve? That's just to randomly do like a military thing. You know, that's like your, uh, what, what are they called? Campaign uh, medals or whatever. Or someone's like, you know, you, you were in Desert Storm. There's, you know, because you did Desert Storm, there's your thing. Um, you know, you'd say, well, you didn't do Desert Storm. Where you, why do you want the medals? But for people that are actually collecting the, the medals, they're collecting the things. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know. That, that's how I'm coming to understand it anyway. Yeah, it's, I think it's ultimately a victim of World of Warcraft having so many because we talked about this with plunderstorm and like you know the four different types of players and where you fit into the like spectrum of them and i think the game literally just has to cater for so many people yeah that it's extremely difficult to do that because for every person who's going to go well i'm forced to do this because i want the rewards and i don't actually want to play now it's different because this isn't pvp like plunderstorm actually was like way different whereas mm -hmm. this is world of warcraft but on a limited time character and a limited time event thing it like it it yeah i suppose there's like there's very little that's unobtainable at the end of the season after after once you exclude like the ksm and ksh stuff yeah and mythic like ahead of the curve those are very limited there's a little bit uh more of that here in a way, because there's a bunch of, like, the extra recall and things. So, it is kind of weird. And I think that they're, they're, they're kind of, they're at a, the real problem where they're trying to push through and find what they can do, what they can't do. Yeah. So, I think it's not like, all of the feedback is actually, like, useful from those players, or from, like, that angle. I say those players, it's not like I'm trying to other them, I'm trying to say, like, actually, this is like a... Oh, yeah, this, just that the, part yeah. of the player base. Yeah, yeah, that part of the player base. So... I guess we'll see how this pans out with them. We'll see how, like, they take the feedback into Plunderstorm and see what they do in future. But I think they are probably going to start stop being, or start being a little bit more careful with what rewards they actually offer. But it is literally that fine line of, this is, at its core, by design, a limited time event, and it has to be. Because it doesn't make yeah. sense to not be. It is literally like, yeah, of course it's a, se it's, of course it's a season. It's like, th that's how it works. We can't not do that. So how do we make it rewarding without causing problems with people who, like, don't want to do it? Which is just like, I mean, it's the same thing as, like, getting PvP as rewards. That's, you know, people want the gladiator amount, and you're like, but I don't want a PvP. And you're like, yeah, that's kind of the problem. This isn't for you. And is it because you don't feel like you're being rewarded for your own things or does it feel like you don't have enough to do or what else is gone so you have to wonder like is the next thing that they should maybe attempt to do is like make sure that whenever they shift or ship something like this they ship something that's like well, if you don't want to do that you can do this instead but then that feels like uh you know it feels like shot your design in the foot yeah they've shot design in the foot or they're spreading themselves too thin to try to yeah. please everyone at the time instead of like I guess uh, if you if you want a really s absolutely scuffed food analogy, right? Imagine there is a restaurant, and they consistently have like one thing. And they say, of "Right we've had here, <laughs> yeah." Everyone gets their food at the same time. Mm -hmm. Everyone who comes who sits in food at the same time, they don't go. There's one plate, bring it out. There's a second plate, bring it out. Yeah, you mean they, like maybe like a more you know high end sort of. You know, it would be a like sort of Michelin star, multiple plate style thing. Like the way they run the kitchen is all the, f you know, everything for the entire seating comes out at the same time. And then, you know. Yeah, it's like imagine that, but for the whole restaurant, and you just have a yeah. plate of, you just have like 12, 20 plates under a heater. 
and it's all just getting worse and getting worse as nah. opposed to going here we'll serve you first because yours is ready oh we'll serve you next because yours is ready we'll serve yours next when yours is ready that stuff kind of makes a little bit more sense to me I think like I have no <laughs> idea what you mean I'm completely all right, cool, confused cool well then um, <laughs> I'll consider that one a failure I basically mean that they, they risk spreading themselves a little bit too thin if they try to please everyone at the same time, which is why I'm like, I, I can get people have like issues with this stuff being formal. I wonder how much of that's the event and how much of that's rewards. Okay, that's the bit. Yeah, I so, think that's the real yeah. thing to talk about. Yeah, so if this drops and it's all stuff you can get in, they, they, like, like they just turn on and say, you can get this stuff efficiently if you do it in uh, t- in the mob remix in the time running but if you don't have time to do that because mm. for whatever length of time this is going to be you're you know you're otherwise uh, disposed for a reason what's going to happen is we're actually going to put all of these rewards into the game through a different acquisition method be that it's all it all goes straight in the vendor for time walking badges so you just do your time walking in the main game as the event cycles around to earn it do they do that? What impact does that have on the actual, like, discourse? Does suddenly no one play the remix? Well, it's actually... It's stuff like that that feels like... It feels like they're kind of shooting their their foot, but... Well, here's you know. the thing. This... This is bigger than any of us. And I say that because... <laughs> ask an Overwatch player how they feel about the battle pass going away. Mm-hmm. Right, because like I'm not saying that mop remix is basically a battle pass. I'm, I'm not, but it is the idea of for a period of time, your progress can go into these rewards, and these rewards are available in this time period in the actual human calendar. Right, that's what a battle pass also is. Now, in Overwatch, I believe the point there is that whenever something leaves the battle pass, it can be on the store. But, uh, you know, the battle pass is your guaranteed way to get it. And of course, there, the the stink of FOMO is is all the worse because you can purchase tier skips. So if you find yourself uh, a day before the battle pass expires, you've maybe got, say, 80% of the levels. You don't, you know, you know you won't have enough time to get them all. That exists so that, you know, you don't lose out in the big mythic skin at the end. So you purchase the tier skips for like a dollar each or whatever they cost. Um, now that's way more extreme because it's involving a hard sell. Whereas here, whether you get the rewards or not has zero difference in Blizzard's bottom line because you just pay for entry to the theme park in the form of your subscription. So it's far worse in a game like Overwatch with uh, you know these rewards expiring and there being a hard sell involved. This is this is a problem that exists in so many games. Some of them, like Helldivers 2. So Helldivers 2 basically does a war bond every month, and those war bonds you purchase for money. Now, the thing with it is the premium currency that you uh, use to purchase those war bonds, you actually get it in-game, and if you're regularly playing... Uh, if you're regularly playing that game, you'll just have a trickle of that currency to the point where you can very realistically, via regular play, just buy all the war bonds yourself with premium currency you earned by playing the game rather than that you you know that you paid for so that's one good thing about how hell divers does it and i think it's worth talking about because hell divers is a game basically with a battle pass every single month that is a live service so it's kind of in a way it takes all the most fundamental boxes of things that you know gamers should hate but why do they love it and it's a lot well obviously it's in the execution so the premium currency feels rewarding and whenever a you know whenever the the month passes and it's time for a new war bond the previous war bond doesn't go away so imagine if uh, say with overwatch season 10 imagine if it brought a new battle pass but then the season 9 battle pass is something you could switch back to to progress along at your own you know leisure that would mean that those battle passes you know well, <laughs> the potential value of them doesn't just expire and go away. So here with World of Warcraft, it is a far less extreme version of any of that because there's no tier skips or anything like that involved. Um, but to a lot of people, it is the idea of they want these rewards. The only way to get them is 
let's just say, let's just say that bronze, which is the new currency that you get seemingly by doing anything, right, in, um, in Mark Remix. To a lot of people, bronze is basically battle pass currency. And they want to use that to unlock the cosmetics that they want from the vendors at the bazaar. And to them, whenever this event expires, it's just like a battle pass going away on them. And they still feel angry about it because they've still paid for entrance. So what do you do with that? Because the other side of this is the design. If you were to do remix Mists of Pandaria uh, for, you know, forever, well, then Blizzard has to support that forever. Have to work on bugs forever. Whenever they do a new version of, uh, you know, a new version of the game, a new patch, it maybe gets tied up in their QA process. Is that sustainable? Is that feasible? It may not be. So there is a value in that. Um, and also in being time limited, there is essentially if something's time limited, you can make it be way more broken, way more overpowered. Because, well, <laughs> if this was around forever, there's no way you'd be able to level up as fast as you can in it. Now, they want you to be able to level up fast and do all this crazy stuff during the event. But they also know that if they just did that forever, they would be presented with a, with a problem. Because now the only, you know, not stupid way to level your character would be to play this. It's also kind of interesting because it gets, you get into the problem of splitting player base as well. Where you almost end up, well, if you put this in and you say, well, okay, well, now you've got, now you're splitting the player base across time running. And then you go, well, okay, well, that that's okay. The entire, like like you're saying, the uh, leveling process is dead. Okay, well, now leveling in the game, the intended way is dead. Right. Damn shit. What do we do? We rotate all of the remixes that we're going to do. Sure, and then no one plays the game because we're waiting on a remix. Which literally happens to me with Time Walking. If I'm leveling an alt, I don't touch it until Time Walking shows up. Yeah. I assume that's something they have to worry about as well. It's like, why not make this a new way of leveling alt? So, well, that is where you uh, run into a problem of, what is this supposed to be? Is this just a way to level? No. This is a bit of gameplay where you play. You, you Effectively, a kind of, what if we merged Chromie Time and classic what if we just smash yeah. those two together in this fusion of you're playing you know it's called time running you're playing time walking but it's it's different it's insane and you because you're supposed to it's not like you hit max level and then you go oh you're done and chromie says or Eterna says well wasn't that fun and puts you back into the world unceremoniously like she like chromie currently does which actually got me i was leveling from 60 to 61 in a primal storm I hit 61 in the middle of Primal Storm and I got y yoked back to Org and I was like, <laughs> no, I was, dude, I wasn't like, I was, what the hell was that? Anyway. Okay. Chromie yeah. just pulling you out of your leveling and throwing you at Orgrimmar, that needs to stop. Yeah. yeah no, it's, side it's, point. Blizzard, come on. Yeah, it's, uh, but the thing is, the point is, you're supp this is supposed to be a moment in time where you're supposed to be playing Miss of Pandaria in a crazy new game mode. That's the intent. Mm-hmm. We're kind of, we have this um, tendency to just, like, boil things down to what they're supposed to be and, you know, what does this mean for the future of the game? What does it mean for blah, 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 blah. But a lot of this is, like, if you bother to live in the moment and understand what this is supposed to be as a player experience, it's not, well, what does this mean six months then from now? It means, what does it mean now? It's supposed to be a thing where you see a thing happen and go, oh, that looks cool. I'm going to play that. I'm going to play Miss Pandaria with a load of people playing Miss Pandaria at the same time. You're not going to get that outside of a classic, realistically. You're not going to get that like at any other point in time. It is basically a excuse like any other real world event. It's like, are people mad that it's not Christmas every day? Probably. Would anyone take those people seriously? Probably not. And that's like a gross like reduction. But is the point yes, is... Yes, Matt, it is gross. Yeah. Disgusting. The point is, <laughs> this is supposed to be a thing that happens, and then you just play it and have fun for a bit, mm -hmm. and then you go about your day. And there is, like, there is a large part of me that is, uh, like, trying not to scream. If you get upset about this, like, you, you, might, you might be correct, but also, holy shit, touch grass. There's a little bit of that. Grass. And, like, We've brought up grass. Uh, 
Yeah, like, I know that's... Um, can we make that the new version of Godwin's Law? Sure. <laughs> right, because you know, the little joke was like, ah, ah, you brought up the Nazis, your argument is over. Um, it's funny, like, I, I mean, me as well. I find mm. myself just immediately going to, oh, touch grass. Yeah. It's and pretty easy to do, though. It's, it's easy, and it's also kind of true. But it's also more, a bit... More often than it's not. See, it's, it's the weird thing, right? It's actually dangerous because it's true. Yeah, In exactly. the same way that self-righteous... Oh, my God. And, this, yeah. and what is this? Miss of Pandaria. We're talking about <laughs> dangerous, self-reinforcing emotions. Yeah. <sighs> Genius. <laughs> the shav always being right, as it. The, that's I mean, it. can you imagine the shav oh. righteousness? Oh, that'd be a tough one if you drop that in the, in the I mean, silver hand leg. Yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. But, um, yeah, they're in a difficult space, right? Mm-hmm. If you wanted to, like, wrap up the FOMO discussion is there are small things they could probably do, like putting rewards into the base game after the fact. But it all undercuts. And it is just there's, uh, what do I call it? There is a trade-off. There's a trade-off. And then, like, uh, that's a very good point to bring up. Blizzard previously talked about making evergreen content and not all the content they've been making is time-limited. All the content they've been making in a period of two months while they're working on another expansion. Which is the weird thing, because yes, there's probably a a space for evergreen content. Yes, is the making this them not making evergreen content? Mm -hmm. Also yes, but at the same time, it is like, I find it really hard to say, well, they shouldn't have done any of this. They should have instead made something that's eternally evergreen that you just do whatever. Because what what's evergreen is if always substantially more limited in scope. Yeah. In terms of gameplay experimentation and gear experimentation, which is one of the things that they're clearly trying to do with this or trying to get actual experimentation out of the like out, out of the way. Or, you know, get an excuse to do it. Which is the case of like obviously they should probably probably have more evergreen stuff going in. But they're trying their best now to use these limited things to go, right, here's a lot of experiments to tide you over until the war. Well, I think there is a bit of a difference. Yeah. There's a bit of a difference. So the first one is, um, this is not something that is massively production intensive. So you you have different parts of an overall uh, game team when you think about the, uh, the the burn rate essentially. So we could talk about this in terms of percentage of their uh, their burn rate. The vast majority is on midnight and war within. Uh, if you look at both uh, this and plunderstorm, what you see is really no production resources uh, being used. Like obviously some, yeah, but you don't have a legion of artists who are working on all of this stuff. You don't have a legion of zone designers, of people who would otherwise be making battlegrounds, dungeons, raids, new mobs. This does, like, this is all stuff that is basically game designers, game jamming, and fucking around. Uh, and I say, you know, I say fucking about as the uh, official term, um, to the point where actually we budget fucking around. Uh, you know, I was talking to James about this, like, we literally do budget fucking around time. Um, into, uh, I mean, into our current game project because that's important for making, like, you know, those things that aren't expected that could surprise and delight people because if you just, if you're in production mode all the time and you don't stop and think about fucking around and having some fun, then the thing will be worse. Um, so to, to me, this is just, this is, this is fucking about. This is mostly designers applying a new rule set to things. So, you know, with quests... Clone the database. Change the rewards to be bronze. Is there scaling? Yes, there is. Ship it. Make a bunch of cogwheel gems and, you know, meta gems and things. Put them on the loot table. Ship it. Does our scaling basically work? Yes. Ship it. It's basically how this is being done. It's not something that is a humongous part of their production. But it's also something that isn't really evergreen in design. If this was here forever, it would be pretty unbalanced for the game because the only, I mean, people just do the mop thing. Um, now, there, you, you, know, you could say maybe this could live as a game mode forever, but they're, pro- they're probably worrying about, you know, if they make this an evergreen feature, uh, again, ongoing maintenance, QA, 
It'll be something that could notably look old and untouched and be confusing. So I have to imagine what they're basically doing here is working out a thing that they can do using design resources, but not really as, you know, as many sort of big production resources. Um, I think if you're adding something with new rewards uh, and a lot of new production resources sort of going into it, I think that's when we should start talking about evergreen content. Um, is this at the expense of evergreen content? Like, you could say so, because the designers working in this could alternatively just make an evergreen thing for the game. Ultimately, it does seem that they've just decided it doesn't make sense to do that, in which case we've got to ask ourselves, why? So they could do the big dig again. <laughs> they could do time rifts again. Like, what could they do within uh, within this at the end of Dragonflight? Because if, if you, I mean, you could do some void thing relating to Zalatath as a sort of a prelude thing to the war within, but is, is that evergreen? How does that work with the level scaling? I mean, I would say just do it like Chromie Time. Because you know the way Chromie Time, it just gives you I level a thousand and just away you go. <laughs> um, you know, so there is something like that that I think, um, you know, I, I'd look. If you could say all of this or horrific visions, but it's through a void portal and it's basically a roguelite within WoW that's inspired by, you know, a little bit of the Torghast combat, a little bit of the horrific visions, maybe a little bit of uh, plunderstorms, uh, you know, pickups and stuff like, yes, I would prefer that to what's going on here. This does seem to be pragmatic. And I, I think ultimately they, well, they're just trying to see how effective this is because this probably does have a lot of potential to reactivate lapsed people and then give them characters they can immediately play in the war within. So there's that side about like us as current players, but then from Blizzard's perspective, um, you know, expansions are only as expansionary to their player base as like, you know, that expansion can reach and you only get that every year and a half, two years. Uh, a little thing like this though, that's an event. You can, you can see how the sort of, uh, cost benefit of it is, I guess, where it doesn't take production resources. It's just some designers building a thing. Um, but then you have a massive marketing beat that you can use for your game to get it out there. And also, and also, oh my God, there's more. So the cloak thing that you get, the cloak of infant whatever, can't remember, can't remember, can't remember the name of it exactly. But you get a cloak and you fill it full of juice. You make it extremely powerful to the point it gives you like hundreds of strength and loads of XP, etc., etc. That seems like you could throw that into a Torghast and have the time of your life. Yeah. So if you want to, if you if they want to take another stab at horrific Torghast or Torghast visions or whatever they want to, you know, call it something fresh in midnight, then you could immediately see them literally porting the tacker. Which yeah. is the point of an experiment that I'm super chill about. I'm also really happy that they're showing those experiments. And I think as that, opposed to never shipping them and keeping them internally. So that is a thing that I sh you know, should mention. They do more game jams than you would think. Uh, I say that because they do more game jams than I thought. Uh, you know, when I when I heard from, uh, you know, people sort of in and around the team, they do plenty of game jams. There's many different versions of Torghast that existed that are not the one that we got. Um... So this, this kind of represents an increase in the amount of their experiments that we actually uh, get to play. Um, I do think, though, that there is, uh, there is a marketing bungle here. They shouldn't say limited time event. They should overtly frame it as an experiment because that's what the staff, right? The workers are framing it as an experiment to us. The only thing that's framing it as a time-limited event is their marketing. And in their marketing copy, like, look, it's at the very top, Matt. Time-limited event. Limited time event. Limited time event, yes. And it was the same for Plunderstorm. They, they roll with that first. That's the first taste that anybody gets, is literally the words saying, limited time event. Might as well scream, hurry up and play now! Hurry up! But that's marketing for you. Yeah, and when you go through a lot of their marketing, uh, you know, talk, it's all that. Now, they could instead say, what's up, gamers? We're doing an experiment. We're running the experiment for this amount of time. We hope it's fun, and, uh, you know, we, we hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to take some learnings from it, and because it's an experiment, we're not doing it forever, and then they could maybe explain why they're not doing it forever. Uh, if they did that, 
And I'm sure there are plenty of humans working there that would like to do that because they are probably also sensible and pragmatic people. Um, I mean, but yeah, it, marketing copy. How many times does marketing just end up... Misrepresent, uh, misrepresent everything and make it horrible. Yeah. Yeah, because from the perspective of the developers, my understanding is they see this as an experiment that they are running. They don't see it as much as a time-limited event thing. If the marketing matched that, the player positioning matched that, then maybe this would be easier for them to uh, to, to operate through. Thank <laughs> you.